I thought we'd take a look today at sorting arrays. So we'll start with a basic array. We'll call it A. And we'll just put some numbers in here, just some simple integers. We'll hit F5 on that and we can see our array over here in the script watch table and we can see the numbers are in the order we put them in. To sort this array is really simple. We just type a dot sort and we put the parentheses there because it's a function and the semicolon of course and then we hit F5 and we can see it sorted the array in ascending order. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we were to um, output one of these and do console.print and we'll do um, the first index which originally was 5 but now it's outputting 1 because it's been sorted. If you want to reverse the order so it's sorted descending you first do the sort and then it's ascending as we've got here and then you type a dot reverse and that will flip the order of the array. So a.sort is a really simple function for sorting arrays containing numbers. It doesn't work with strings or objects though, so it's just for simple numbers. But if you've got an array like this and you want to sort it, this is the function to use. So let's have a look at sorting an array of strings. So we'll make a new array, we'll call it b. And in here I'm just going to put some simple one character strings, but these could be full words. And we'll look at that in the script watch table. So we've got B, C, A, D, E. So if we try the same function as before, dot sort, and hit F5, we can see it just doesn't work. It doesn't change the order because it doesn't work with strings. So the function we have to use instead is sort natural. And there we go. They're all sorted in the correct order. And again, it's ascending. If we want to flip that around, we do B dot reverse. and now it's in descending order. So sort natural is a great function and it can be used for other things as well. So if we have an array that's mixed, it's got contains numbers and strings, we can use sort natural for that. So let's create a new one and we'll put some numbers in here and some letters. And we can see that the array is in the order we've entered it as we would expect. So we've got a mix of numbers and letters so 3, 6, A, 2, C, 4, etc. So now if we run sort natural on this, and I'll hit F5, we can see now we have all the numbers in ascending order, followed by all the letters in ascending order. And again, C dot reverse to flip this. And now we get the letters in descending order, followed by the numbers in descending order. Sort natural can also be used to sort an array of strings that contain numbers. So let me give you a demonstration of that. So this time we'll go with um, mic positions because this is a quite a good example of when you'd actually want to use this. So we might have a wide mic and a hall mic and a decker mic and a close mic. But let's say we don't want them to be displayed in this order, so we might be printing these out, for example, or showing them on the UI, and we want them to be in a different order. Let's say we want the decker to be first, followed by the close, followed by the hall, followed by the wide. So we can put numbers here. We can say, okay, decker's going to be first, so we'll put a zero at the beginning. Then the close, we'll put a one. Then, I forgot what we said, but let's say it was hall next. So we'll put a two, and then the wide, we shall put a three. So this is the order that we want to have them sorted by. And then we'll run d dot sort natural. And now they are sorted based on that number at the beginning. So zero, one, two, three. And if you wanted to output these now without the number, I'll show you how to do that quickly because it's really fairly straightforward. So it would create a loop, we'll put four x in d. So this is basically saying x is each of these, one after the other, and d is our d array. And then we'll just do a console.print, and we're going to write x. So remember, x is each of these in turn. Dot substring 1 
x dot length. So this is saying find a substring in this in each of these strings starting at the second character. So the characters are indexed from zero. So two in this case would be zero. So one is the h. So saying from h to the length of the string. So from h to the end of the string. So I'll hit F5 on this. And it's now printing them in the order we've sorted them by, but we're trimming off that number at the beginning by using the substring function. So just a little thing there that might be useful to you. I'll just comment that out for now. It's also possible to use a custom function to sort arrays. So we'll create a new array, call it E. Let's add a few more lines here, so that's a bit easier to see there. And we'll just put some numbers in here again. And this time we're not going to use the sort function, we're not going to use the sort natural function, we're going to create a custom function. And generally for this simple example, you'd just use the sort function. But I'll show you the custom function, and then we'll do a slightly more advanced example of the custom function. So we write engine dot sort with function. And then it takes two parameters. The first parameter is the array we want to sort. So that's E in our case. And the second parameter is a function. And the function itself takes two parameters. And usually you'd call these A and B, but if I do that, it's going to conflict with our A and B arrays. So we'll just call them X and Y. And what this function does is it takes these in pairs x and y, so it takes the values, so let's say it takes 4 and 6 and it compares them against each other, then it takes 6 and 1 and compares those, then 1 and 5 and compares those and so on, through the array. And it provides them as these pairs, x and y. And it expects us to return a value which must be either negative, positive or zero. And I'm not going to really go into the details of this function because it's quite a powerful function, you can do a lot with it, but most of the time you're going to be doing very simple things. So I'm just going to show you two examples with simple things that you would do um, fairly often. So we're going to be comparing x against y, and if x is lower than y, we want to return a negative number. So we could write it like this, if x is lower than y, return minus one. And if I hit a five on this, we shall see, here's our e array, and you can see it's been sorted in ascending order. Now if we flip this symbol around, x is greater than y, it's going to be sorted in descending order. Another way of writing this, which is how you'll more commonly see it written, rather than having to have an if statement in here, is we can just write the logic directly by writing return x minus y, because it, if x is lower than y, it's going to return a minus number anywhere. So if I hit F5, so we can see it's ascending. And then if we want to reverse this, we can just swap the positions of X and Y. And now it's descending. Now, of course, with this simple example, you wouldn't use a custom function. You'd just use the, the standard sort function or the sort natural function. But let me show you an example where you would use a custom function. So I'm going to create a new array. We'll call it F. And I'm going to populate this array with objects. So it's not going to have numbers, it's not going to have strings, it's going to have objects. And the objects, they're going to be in the standard format of a key and a value, so we'll just use the word key for the key. And the value in our case can just be a number. So we'll just put a few values in here. Okay, so let's just have a look at our array of objects here, and we'll just expand all of these so we can see the order that they're in. So we've got 5, 3, 2, 8, and 4. And if we were to write f.sort, we'd get an error message that says it can't compare arrays or objects because this function can't do that. We can try sort natural, which can compare arrays and objects, but it's not going to give us the result we want. We'll get something strange, like we've got here 2, 8, 4, 5, 3. So that's not the way to go. So we can write engine.sort with function, pass in f, and again, we're going to create a custom function with x and y. And this time we can perform a bit of logic. So X and Y again refers to each of the 
elements in the array as pairs. So we've got X and Y, and then when it goes to the next iteration, this would be X and this would be Y, etc. So these are now objects. They're not just individual numbers. So we can compare any of the keys in the object. And we've only got one key, but we might have others. So we could have things like an ID, 10 or something. We could have however many um, key value pairs in our objects that we wanted, and we could use any of those for the comparison. But we'll just keep it simple. We'll stick with just one key value pair. So we do the same thing. We return a value that's either negative, positive, or zero. And we'll do the comparison. But instead of just comparing x against y, like we were doing up here, we can compare one of the key value pairs. So in our case, it's called key. And if I hit F5, you can see it's sorted them ascending now based on the key property. And again, we swap the X and Y position and it will sort it in descending order. Eight, five, four, three, two. Now this function, when used with objects, can be really helpful. Uh, there are times when you might want to sort by two parameters at the same time, for example. You might want to have things um, alphabetized by first name and last name, that kind of thing. So the custom function can become uh, really quite essential. But most of the time when you're using it, it's going to be simple things like this. You're just sorting by a single pair. I'll put a link in the video description to the JavaScript sort functions documentation, which Highs is basically copying. It's, it's the same functionality. So you can use the documentation for that to find out a bit more about how this works and how you may want to apply it. I hope you found this video useful. I'll be posting a snippet with some comments um, to make things a bit clearer on Patreon. So if you follow me on Patreon and you're one of my higher tier supporters, you will get access to that snippet. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below the video on YouTube. I do read all the comments. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like them, click the like button and the subscribe button. If you'd like to join me on Patreon, there's a link in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.